Hello everyone, welcome back to Comment Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. So far, we have discussed the classification and management of acute respiratory infections in under 5 children. But it is always better that we rather prevent the occurrence of the disease than to manage it. So that is why in today's video, we are going to talk about the prevention of acute respiratory infections. Now prevention, especially the primary prevention includes uh, certain approaches like improved living conditions, better nutrition, reduction of indoor smoke pollution. So uh, in, in our first video on ARI, we discussed different risk factors which include poor living conditions, especially overcrowding, malnutrition and then indoor air pollution etc. So we have to rather avoid these things or have to improve the conditions so that the ARI can be prevented. In this slide we have summarized the risk factors for ARI. On the left hand side we have the uh, image of a slum. So people who are forced to live in a very small space. So a lot of people are living in a place or in a space which is not adequate for them. Because of that they are very close to each other and it actually going to augment the transmission of respiratory infections. Uh, also the kind of living condition apart from overcrowding can determine the transmission of a lot of communicable diseases like ARI, diarrhea, etc. Then we have indoor air pollution in different forms. Indoor cooking is quite common in rural areas, also in urban areas among the lower socioeconomic status. So uh, since these people cannot afford to get a separate kitchen uh, because of lack of fund or because of lack of place or space, they are forced to cook inside their living room and that can uh, lead to indoor air pollution. Indoor air smoking is very common in people across all kind of socioeconomic status. Uh, the custom of burning incense stick or burning mosquito coils or any kind of mosquito repellents including uh, liquidators can lead to uh, indoor air pollution. Then we have malnutrition which is very common in under 5 child and malnutrition itself is a risk factor for lot of communicable diseases including ARI, diarrhea, etc. So if the age of the child is less than 6 months, exclusive breastfeeding is recommended and should be religiously followed and when the child turns 6 months then complementary feeding should be initiated and complementary feeding should be done with the correct type of food. So all these are the risk factors behind ARI. Then we have specific protection uh, against certain uh, infections, respiratory infections. So we have immunization which is an important measure to reduce the cases of pneumonia which occurs as a complication of vaccine preventable disease. So we have certain vaccine preventable disease that means certain diseases which can be prevented if we uh, opt for vaccination or immunization. This includes measles vaccine, HIV vaccine and PCV vaccine and we shall discuss about them in the next slide. Most of them are uh, bacterial vaccine as you can see and so uh, these vaccines help in prevention of the bacterial ARI. So we have the first one the measles vaccine which can be a monovalent so that means the only measles component is there or it can be a uh, MR vaccine or a MMR vaccine. MR stands for measles and rubella vaccine or mums measles rubella that is MMR vaccine. The dose is 0.5 ml schedule. There are two doses. First one is at 9 to 12 months and second one is 
between 16 to 24 months preferably around 18 months it is given root of administration is subcutaneous and site is right upper arm the second one is HIV which stands for Haemophilus influenzae type B remember this is a bacteria Haemophilus influenzae it is not a influenza virus so please do not make this mistake the dose is same 0.5 ml and we have uh, three doses here at six week 10 week and 14 week remember Haemophilus influenzae type B is given as a part of pentavalent vaccine pentavalent comprises uh, five vaccines diphtheria pertussis tetanus that is DPT along with that hepatitis B and Haemophilus influenzae type B so this pentavalent is given at six week 10 week and 14 week three doses there is no booster dose the route of administration is intramuscular and it is given at the anterolateral side of left mid thigh so this is given on the left thigh the next one is the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine or the PCV dose is same that is 0.5 ml here we have two doses and then followed by one booster dose so the two doses are given at six week and 14 week and the uh, booster doses is given at nine completed months the route of administration is intramuscular and it is given at the anterolateral side of the right mid thigh so remember pentavalent is given on the left mid thigh and pcv is given on the right mid thigh and both of them are intramuscular we have global action plan for prevention and control of pneumonia and diarrhea also known as gappd and it has certain goals or specific goals that we are trying to achieve by 2025 for example reduce the mortality from pneumonia and diarrhea in children less than five years so in case of pneumonia we are trying to get fewer deaths than three per 1000 live births and in case of diarrhea uh, the death should be fewer than one per 1000 live births then we want to have reduced incidence of severe pneumonia by 75 percent uh, in children less than five years of age as compared to the 2010 levels so we have 2010 data as compared to that we want 75 percent reduction in the incidence of severe pneumonia as well as incidence of severe diarrhea uh, in under five children and also reduce by 40 percent of the global number of children less than five years of age were stunted as compared to 2010 levels so stunting is uh, one of the indicators of malnutrition and we have already learned that malnutrition is a direct uh, risk factor for both diarrhea and pneumonia so that is why we want uh, malnutrition uh, to be reduced and the indicator that we are using here is the stunting now uh, for uh, achieving these goals we have also kept some targets for the year 2025 as well as 2030 so what are what are the targets uh, by 2025 we want 90 percent full dose coverage of each relevant vaccine with 80 percent coverage in every district so vaccination coverage should be 90 percent in each uh, state and for each district at least 80 percent uh, should be there similarly 90 percent access to appropriate pneumonia and diarrhea case management with 80 percent coverage in every district so the uh, approach uh, i'm sorry the case management of pneumonia and diarrhea should be at least 90 percent access so there should be at least 90 percent of the cases will be able to access the management for diarrhea and pneumonia and for every district it is at least 80 percent and then at least 50 percent coverage of exclusive breastfeeding during the first six months of life virtual elimination of pediatric hiv so of all this the first two are directly related to ari and diarrhea and the third one is related to malnutrition which again we already know is a risk factor for ari and diarrhea and by the year 2030 the targets which have been uh, kept are universal access to basic drinking water in healthcare facilities and homes universal access to adequate sanitation in healthcare facilities by 2030 and in homes by 2040 universal access in hand washing facilities 
by water and soap in healthcare facilities and home and universal access to clean and safe energy technologies in healthcare facilities and home so mostly regarding the uh, basic needs like drinking water basic sanitation etc which <coughs> should be present in the healthcare facilities like sub centers primary health center hospitals etc and also also in the homes so these are the targets kept for the year 2030 but if we look at the target of 2025 uh, we want uh, more number of children to be vaccinated and more of them having access to appropriate management for diarrhea and pneumonia so all these targets have been kept so that we can achieve the goal by 2025 which is to prevent and control the pneumonia and diarrhea among under 5 children so with this we conclude today's session if you like the video please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your batchmates juniors and friends we also have our facebook page that you can follow the link is given in the description take care and we shall see you in our next video